Hello class, and welcome to week two of the Educational Evaluation and Assessment course. Today we're going to talk about an overview of the course. Um, I like to go through the syllabus at the, near the beginning of the course and make sure everyone understands the classroom policies as well as the assignments and due dates. Please make sure that you've printed the syllabus and you have it out in front of you because we are going to be referring to it. The first thing you'll note that this course is entirely online, uh, 15 weeks of posted assignments and various other, other syllabi assignments. Let's start at the beginning. At the top of the syllabus, you'll see my name. I like to be called Dr. H, by the way. My office is in Dobbs, uh, at the Dobbs Ferry Campus in Mercy Hall. And my office hours, that should actually say Wednesdays, um, 1.30 to 4.30 by appointment, or if you prefer to Skype with me, or you could just give me a call. Um, course description, which uh, I'll let you read. The important thing to note here is that this course will contain a minimum of 10 hours of field work where you'll be going into the school to conduct some uh, field work assignments. A statement of our mission uh, statement, School of Education. A statement about academic integrity, which is important to pay attention to because um, academic integrity is something that we really prize highly here at the School of Education. If caught cheating, it could be grounds for um, an F on the assignment and even possibly an F for the course. My assignments will be uploaded, most of them through SafeAssign, which does check for plagiarism. A statement of the students with disabilities. Uh, you'll note that if you do require an accommodation, you are required to go to the Office of Accessibility and then submit documentation to me uh, prior to receiving the, the appropriate accommodation. If you have any questions about that, the phone number is listed there for you to talk to them about that. We do offer counseling services here at the School of uh, at Mercy College, and the number is listed there. Um, and then a statement about field experiences. All the standards in this course are based upon the um, standards for teacher competence and educational assessment. And you see here listed the student learning outcomes. Basically, the course is going to be talking about what does it mean to be appropriately assessing students how do you do that? How to use different types of assessments? You are going to be required to make up some ty different types of assessments. Most of you by now should have ordered the textbook, which is the Macmillan Classroom Assessment Principles and Practice uh, for Effective Standards-Based Instruction. Uh, from time to time, we will be, I will be providing you with additional readings on Blackboard. So make sure not only to check the syllabus, but to check and see on the course um, Blackboard course shell what is required. I do list a timetable broken out by weeks. There are 15 weeks in the semester. Every week uh, by Sunday at midnight of the previous week, I will post a new uh, learning module. And it always follows the same pattern. You go into the weeks folder on the course site as you did this week, and you'll see week one or week two, week three, and a README file that tells you what the assignments are. All the resources that you need are posted in the folder. So you see here, for example, we're in week two, which is due Sunday, September 18th. Our topics are uh, cognitive learning targets and standards behavioral objectives, writing behavioral objectives. There are two readings, chapter two, as well as an article. I generally post the uh, web links on the course site in the folder, so you can check that. And then this particular learning module has some assignments due. One of them is a discussion board posting, and that's all detailed in the README file. So here, for example, you'll see week learning week two. I always post the objectives for the learning module. So after this week, what you should be able to do. 
um, and a series of activities. If you work through the learning module in order, it'll make the most sense. Sometimes there'll be quizzes, sometimes there'll be discussion postings. Those should never be done out of sequence, so you should be uh, posting or, or taking the quiz uh, based on the incorporation of your knowledge for the week. All learning modules assignments are due the following Sunday by midnight. So for example, this one is due Sunday, September 18th by midnight. If you have to accept a submit late, I need an email from you and it needs to be an extraordinary circumstance. A wedding, a death in the family, something uh, that documents that. If I do not get that, sorry about that, that just popped up. If I do not get that, I can't accept late work. So again, here is a continuation of week two. You should be uh, doing the readings, you're listening to this PowerPoint, and then you're going to do a discussion posting. At the end of the learning module, I always post uh, a double check. So what you should have done in the learning module. So you should have listened to the course overview lecture, which is this lecture, read chapter two of the text, listen to another lecture called Assessment, Decision-Making, and Learning Targets, read how to post, and post a thoughtful discussion and respond to at least one colleague's posting. If course points are assigned, I indicate that. So one course point doesn't sound like a lot, but it's really one point of your overall 100-point uh, uh, course grade. So if a course, if you did everything perfectly and got 100, that would be 100 points. If you miss this particular module, you'd only be able to get 99 points. So it's 1% of your grade. Before you post the first discussion posting, I'd like to spend a minute talking about what a discussion posting is and what it isn't. First of all, it's a, it's a thoughtful integration of everything you've learned or different concepts that you've learned during the week. Um, it should be written or typed up in Word, and you should save it on your computer because um, you might lose it when you're trying to, to post it. But I don't want it attached as a Word document. That just gets cumbersome for everyone to open. Instead, after you've saved it to your computer, just copy and paste it from the Word document into the discussion window and click Submit. Um, when you respond to your colleagues, it should be more than good job or I like your posting. Thoughtful commentary extends the conversation. So imagine you're sitting in a room with this person and you want to say something constructive about what they've said, but you don't want to be negative and you don't want to just say, hey, that's a good job, because that ends the conversation. So you might say, um, I noticed that you brought out um, you know, your use of formative assessment in the classroom in this way. I'd never thought about that before. Have you considered this? And that would extend the discussion. On the course site, you'll notice an observation form. Um, this is just the top part of it. It's on, the, it's on the main course site. And this is called the Permission to Observe form. It has the dean's signature. It uh, is something that you fill out and when you decide where you're going to be doing your classroom uh, field work, you present it to the teacher and to the principal at the school. This verifies that we are, in fact, sending you out, that you're not an imposter, that you're a student at Mercy College, and it gives correct information. Again, as I said, late submissions will not be accepted unless prior arrangements are made. Um, plagiarism, we talked about. I really recommend, especially if you're in the earlier part of your program, that you um, familiarize yourself with the APA format. You should have run into this, those of you who have taken classes before. I have put a link there for you. This is what you, the guide that you use when you're writing. There are certain very stylistic guidelines that uh, APA requires, and so you should click on that link to familiarize yourself with some of them. We'll be talking more in depth about APA later. There is an APA guide that you can order. Uh, version 6 is what you want to order. If you just go to Amazon and you can click on American Psychological Association and look for version 6 of their guide, and that has all the details 
about APA. This is a 100-point class. There you can see the assignments and what they're worth. The learning modules are worth one point a week for 15 points. Uh, and the various other assignments, including your field work. There are two parts to the field work, each worth 10 points, and a final exam that will be given online for 20 points, 100 points. You can see the grading scale there. This is fairly consistent across the departments. Uh, 94 to 100 is an A, 90 to 93 is an A minus, etc. Let's talk for a minute about a few of the assignments that I just uh, put up there, but let's talk in a, uh, in a little more details. Um, the learning modules are worth 15 points and they're ongoing. They're always due on Sunday. The reason it says Wednesdays there is sometimes I will ask you to post your discussion by Wednesday, but I'll put that in the module if I do. Uh, and they're always due on Sunday to be discussed. On October the 16th, you're going to be required to review an assignment of some student work, and then you're going to uh, write it up about what you found and how you could make instructional decisions based on that formative assessment. Each of these assignments I'll be talking about in more depth as the weeks progress, but right now I just want to give you an overview. That's worth 15 points. On, by November 6th, you're going to create a 10 question um, quiz and using the New York State, State content standards you're going to create unit objectives, solutions to the test items. Uh, you can work in a, with a partner on this assignment. It's up to you to find a partner and locate them. Uh, if you choose that, you, however, the two of you need to submit 15 items with solutions and you need to email me and let me know that you'll be doing that. You're going to use the course readings and discussions to create a task and a rubric, something that is not just a simple objective, true-false, but a, a rubric performance-oriented task um, that you would give a student and the rubric that you would use to grade that student. Um, that's due December 11th. I would not recommend that you start on some of these later assignments until we've covered some of the course content because obviously you don't know yet how to create a rubric. As I mentioned, there are two field work projects. Um, each of these requirements is worth 10 points for 20 points total. Your first one is due October 23rd, and that's just basically to go in and conduct a 15 to 30 minute interview with a current teacher or a current administrator and some of the questions, the, the interview should be focused on assessment because this class is about assessment. So you might consider asking a few questions in your interview. Uh, how do they use assessment? What kinds of assessments do they use? How do they create them? How do they use assessment to inform instruction? So that's ultimately the purpose of good assessment is to use it to inform instruction. Um, to, to, to take a student from where they, where they are in terms of knowledge and skills and to advance them to the next level. Otherwise, it, it, it's useless. Um, what do they find useful or not useful about each of the types of assessment teacher created and standardized? And um, how does the cultural accountability affect them personally? In other words, we've had a greater push for standards and for assessment Think about all of the state testing, for example, uh, that have gone on in the last 15 to 20 years in education. How has that affected your interview participant personally and why? You're going to take notes on all these questions and then submit a four to five page double spaced paper uh, in which you analyze their experiences with assessment. So in addition to uh, talking about these questions and what you found out, you're going to add at the end, what did you learn from this person? And did you think about anything in particular that we have discussed in class? You can use these questions as guidelines for your write-up. Again, it's not just going to be posting the question and the answer, but it's going to be framed in a narrative. Who you interviewed, why you interviewed that chose them, where the interview took place, what date the interview took place, 
what you found out in terms of these questions about assessment and then what you learned. Fieldwork Paper 2 is a classroom visit. Arrange to visit a classroom for at least six hours. This can be do, done um, in one setting or you can do it over multiple settings. But you're going to take notes during your field work uh, time, recording your field notes to describing assessments used by the teacher. Now, I don't want you to just look for tests and quizzes. There are many different types of assessment that go on in the classroom. Perhaps the teacher is asking questions prior to a lesson and trying to gauge student um, knowledge about a particular topic. Perhaps she's working one-on-one -on -one and doing assessment with a student, either written or oral. So you are going to be on the alert for all kinds of different assessment. And these are the guiding questions. Again, you're doing four to six double-spaced pages that are more narrative than answers to the questions. 